I'm here at the Pacific Northwest District Championship with Team 1778 Chill Out. We're here with our amazing robot that's very adaptable and quick. I'm here with Apollo, Isaac, Eli, and Lilia. Um, we're here to talk to you next on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay, so our robot, as mentioned, is extremely adaptable. Our three main subsystems, our shooter and amp, our intake, and our climbers, um, each have been built in order to have as few failure modes as possible. Our intake here is over the bumper because we know it's been proven No, we know we can do it. Um, our climbers here, we have two motors per climber. We have the ability to climb on only one climber. And that has been proven multiple times. We've done it at Bonnie Lake. Um, and this event, it also allows us to harmony climb very easily as we can do the funky climbs when the chain isn't perfectly aligned. Yeah, so as Lilia mentioned, we have an over the bumper intake. Uh, we During some early prototyping in the season, uh, we found that only four rollers were needed to uh, successfully intake the note. Uh, we wanted to put as few rollers as possible on it so that we could pivot it around super quickly and so we could keep it inside the robot as frequently as possible. Um, so yeah, we have the note come up through the intake and then it gets sucked into our shooter. It gets held right here. Um, and these indexer rollers also serve as our amp scoring mechanism. So we hold the note in these indexer rollers and we shoot it out behind this amp bar like this. And the bar keeps the note inside of the amp and means that we can eject the notes very quickly. And there's a very low chance of them falling out. So it makes our amp scoring process uh, very consistent and reliable. Um, the really cool part about this mechanism is that as you can see when we're moving it, uh, it's deployed using a virtual four bar back to our main pivot axle. Uh, this means that it's deployed with no additional motors, which makes controlling it in code and software uh, very simple. And it's one less point of failure. Like we can't have a motor burn out and then we can't score amp. And having amp scoring integrated with our indexing rollers is just another way that we eliminated a point of failure. There's no additional mechanism, it's just part of the shooter. Uh, and then that brings us to the, the actual shooter. Uh, these are two inch stealth wheels with a two and a half to or a one to two and a half abduction on them. Each axle has a Neo power in it. So the top and bottom are powered independently. Uh, we have like a separate motor running each axle. As you can see, the one side has two wheels instead of five. This gives the note a uh, spin and makes the shots much more stable. And it's allowed us to push our shooting range all the way to the wing line, which has proved uh, extremely helpful in some of the higher note count autos that we have. Uh, yeah, and as Leah mentioned, the climbers each have two Neos on them, uh, which sounds like a lot. It is a lot of torque, but it's proved as a successful backup at Bonnie Lake. Uh, one of our climbers broke and we had to remove it from the robot so we could repair it. And for the next three matches, we were still able to climb and get the RPs that we needed, even with a full climber off the robot. So that backup and that like redundancy really helped us perform at our events. Uh, yeah, so we, we designed for redundancy. Um, so yeah, we, we have backups for everything. Um, and in our code, uh, we have multiple different ways. So first off, we can intake from source um, with our shooter if needed. Um, enable. So if, if something happens to our intake and we don't have an intake, we can angle the shooter back and intake from source. It's, it's not spinning right now. That's the first time that's happened. But um, yeah, so if we need to, we can intake from source. 
Um, oh, there it goes. Yeah, and then that is our backup. Um, and then when we go to amp, as uh, Eli said earlier, we angle it back to this position and then we shoot it at the back and the amp bar keeps it in. Um, we lock on to all of the angles um, on the field. So when we're going to source or uh, amp, uh, the, the robot will automatically align to that angle so we can easily pick up notes or score the notes as needed. Um, we have uh, our climbers, which extend uh, fairly quickly. Um, we, we've gotten a few buzzer beater climbs um, and we really like them and we can climb with one if needed because we have two on each one. So uh, we have had situations where one climber has failed um, and we've had to climb. We just rest up against the podium. Um, yeah, and then we, we can also spit our notes out. Um, if we were to intake one note into our shooter and one is stuck in our intake, we can also just spit the uh, intake note out. Um, yeah, and then we have a limelight here uh, to lock onto the speaker. We get our field pose um, and then compare that pose to the, um, the, the speaker tag pose. And from that, um, if we were to not see an April tag for a brief period of time, it'll re-angle um, towards the speaker and there's a lock-on period for our shooting. So if it ever finds that someone bumps us or we angle away or it doesn't see the tag, it'll uh, it'll stop the shooting and re-angle. So we know our shots are gonna go in. Yeah, uh, for our autos, we test each one three times at our practice field. Um, it has to work three times in a row for us to count it as a uh, comp ready. Um, and we, we have eight different autos that we run at the competition. We really like to prioritize the autos that go for mid, especially because, um, you know, the mid race is super, super valuable in this game. Um, yeah, and we for our autos, we use uh, Corio and we uh, put those paths into Path Planner and that compiles them and uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it for programming. All right, thank you, uh, 1778, chill out. Uh, I hope you have an amazing event uh, here at the Sigma Plus City Championship. Best of luck. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.